but I recognize they are shocking to most people. Um, but there's also a lot of other material, and so in reading a lot, I'm sure you're exposed to perspectives and well-articulated ones on a position in life that is different than what you had been used to. Um, how was that impact on you? What was that like for you to come in never having heard of this stuff and all of a sudden you're hearing a whole realm of counter theory that's basically deconstructing everything that you've come to believe uh, yeah. or, most, or most of what you've come to believe. Right. It's a frightening, a frightening process. Um, but it, it's also a process I'm no stranger to because I've gone through that with my religious beliefs, with my views on gay marriage, with absence only education. So I've had that uh, kind of coming out and seeing the light uh, experience before. But but this one, uh, particularly seeing men's issues in a new light, is very. Uh, it was very overwhelming for me, especially in the beginning, because you start to question everything, and that's actually why the title is The Red Pill, because I felt like that um, symbolism was the closest to what the process has been like for me. Um, and, it, I mean, it, it affects your everyday life. I mean, it, no matter what show I'm watching or radio station I'm listening to or seeing people on the street, now everything, I, I see everything differently in, in terms of gender roles and and... You know, before making the red pill, I never thought about what would it be like to be a man in today's society. Never crossed my mind. I always thought just women have a, a mountain to climb and to get up to the equality that men already have. And I just always assumed we're the ones that have the, the difficulties that are discriminated against. And so to now look at, um, you know, all the men that I love in my life, my uh, father figures, and my boyfriends, and guy friends, I mean, I look at their roles uh, so differently, and, and now to a point of saying, you know, roles re reversed, would I want it to be born of a man? And the scary thing to answer. So, I mean, obviously, you probably already hear the answer, but let's say that for the film. So, I mean, but it is it is interesting to see how, I mean, it, whether I'm looking at the construction workers on the side of the road while I'm driving to work and um, just even the housekeeping. I mean, one of, it's so silly now that I think about it, but I, I tried to remember why was, why was I such a, um, a I don't know, militant <laughs> feminist before. And I was like, well, what, what was stirring that up in me? And mainly it was two reasons. One was I was upset with my role in society. And the second reason was um, I was upset with uh, the way that women were portrayed in movies. Um, and, you know, because I had a, a background in being in the film industry and acting, I was very aware of how, you know, the only ro roles that I would go out for were the blonde girl dying in the woods with her shirt torn off. And so... You know, I was very aware of, like, oh, this is my role, this sucks. Um, but but I never thought, what is it like for, for men? And, um, I mean, it, we've interviewed probably around over 30 um, men's rights people in this film so far, and each person has their own personal story as to what brought them to the movement. Um, some people actually were just strictly compassionate about friends that they saw or a family member and didn't have anything personally affect them, but more indirectly saw saw discrimination. And that's probably why you see a lot of women um, coming to the men's movement uh, out of compassion. Um, uh, but, did you find yeah, the I, fact that Did you find the fact that there were women in the men's movement strange at first? Uh, I did, and... You know, it's. I did. I, I'm thinking about how um, when I'm talking to people about making this film, The Red Pill, it's really fascinating to see the responses, and a majority of them are dismissive of the men's movement. Um, many of them are even attacking me for making such a film. For and I actually had one person in particular tell me, "Why are you giving them a platform to speak?" Um, so I've been How really. How cool to hear that? 
<laughs> it's, well, I mean, really, it's just seeing what you guys have been dealing with. I mean, seeing what the, the men's rights activists have been dealing with is this dismissiveness and, and put down and, and not really understanding the issues. I think the blanket statement of men's rights advocate or activist um, is a scarier thing to people rather than looking at the issues one by one. And that's what I want the film to focus on because I think as a blanket statement, would you be for men's rights and the men's rights movement, people will immediately say no or, or heard that it was a hate group or something. But when you start to talk about the issue one by one, you see it, it start to chisel away in them. You, you see, oh, well, that's a good point. Yeah, I didn't think about that. And um, so, I mean, I've, I've been having uh, conversations with my feminist friends about this film, and it's amazing to see the, um, the gut reaction discussed for, for such a topic. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, a documentary film, hopefully you have an audience that's barricaded in the theater for 90 minutes, and we'll at least sit and listen to the different stories, the different issues, um, and maybe, I mean, I, I don't expect to, you know, have people walking out in droves now joining the movement or anything, or on either side, but at least start the conversation um, and raise a little bit of awareness about what the men's movement's about. Um, but, yeah. So... In the process of making this, you uh, certainly sounds like that you have been alerted at least to some issues that maybe you hadn't considered before. And by the way, for what it's worth, uh, the same thing happens with men. I remember 25 years ago driving to work, and I was thinking at the time about what we needed to do at the treatment center I worked at to create a women's program. And some beggar came up to my car asking for money, and I was like, get away from me. Uh, th and that was the mentality that I had. I think that's a human trait, so <laughs> uh, it, it's a real common thing. But back to the movie, uh, when you were making this, did you expect um, to hear people like Warren Farrell and, and Aaron Pitsy and, and some of these people say a lot of the stuff? Was this just like one bowling ball after another hitting you? <laughs> or, 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 or what was that process like, hearing these intellectuals that have been around now for a long time and uh, suddenly you know who they are? Yeah. You know, I... Um and I can't quite explain why this is the way it was, but this was just my experience. I really felt like meeting the people behind the words, behind the books, behind the blog posts, had such a greater effect on me understanding where they're coming from and seeing their side, rather than just reading what they have to say. Um, even watching videos. I watched videos of Warren Farrell on YouTube before I interviewed him, and was reading Myth of Male Power, and some of it was sinking in, but it, a lot of it I still had a huge wall up. And then I met him, and I've interviewed him a few times and filmed him. And, uh, gosh, I must have, like, over 10 hours of footage just with Warren Farrell. <laughs> so it's a lot to take in. But when you meet him and see where his heart is, see where his intentions are, um, I can ask the, the questions that I'm thinking while I'm reading the myth of male power and get that immediate response. It, it just has such a bigger effect on understanding where they're coming from. Um, same with Erin Pizzi. I didn't know what to think before meeting her, and she just blew me away. One of the most fascinating people I've ever met in my life. Absolutely, hands down. Um, Mark Angelucci, uh, you know, Dean, of course. I mean, there's so many great personalities, people, stories, and, and particularly seeing where their heart was was made me uh, made me see, you know. Um, and I, I'm not sure why, you know, reading the blogs and watching the YouTube videos just when it hit it, I mean, maybe it's, I can't tell you why. Um, and I, I hope, you know, in the documentary people will be able to connect with people on screen as well and, and not feel a wall up. But um, I think when you're just so entrenched in, in an ideology to begin with, it's very hard to see outside of that, you know, friend of mind. No matter what it is, if it's a religion, if it's 
whatever. Um, 